Okay, here's a helper video for assignment number four and number five, maybe a little bit on number five. Okay, so um, you were supposed to read this. So if you did, um, here it is again. An extreme is a place on a graph where the function value, i.e. the y value, reaches a maximum or a minimum. An extreme is considered global if it is the max min over the entire domain. That means for the whole graph. It is considered local if it is only the max min in a spec specific interval of the domain. Locate the extremes on the graph and label them A, B, C, D, E. So they're giving you a hint right there that there's five of them. So what are there five of? So extremes means a max or a min. So basically you're looking for peaks and valleys. So if I follow along my graph, it's going up, 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 way up to here. That is definitely extreme. That is my highest. And it's a high y value. So that means it's a max. So this is a maximum. And then we have to consider, is it global or local? So is it the highest point for the entire graph, as far as we can tell? So if we look at this, this implies down here that it's going down forever. And this over here implies that it's going down forever. So this would be a global maximum. There is no point that's going to be higher on this entire graph because these are both going to keep going down. So this would be a global maximum. Okay. Then if I continue along, I'm going down, 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 down to here, and I reach a bottom here, and then it starts going up. So that's also an extreme where I hit the bottom here. This is an extreme. And so this is a minimum because it's down low, but is it the lowest point on the entire graph? No, because there's points on here and over here that are lower than it. So it's not a global minimum, so we call this a local minimum. If we were to just look at part of the graph, like right here, that would be the lowest point of the graph for that section. Okay, so then I continue on. So, sorry, this was A, this was B. Okay, so you continue on the same way. You should be able to find C, D, and E. Okay, there's three more letters. You're going to place on those three more letters. Notice this is a letter F. Um, this, the way it's drawn right now, is not a maximum or a minimum on, on the way that the graph is presented at this moment. Okay, so next we're going to, inter we're going to indicate an interval in which the ex um, for each extreme function value. So here, this is well, it's actually the, the extreme for the entire graph. Uh, but let's just narrow it down. If we just took a picture, just a slim window, um, we could do this. We could say, OK, that's the extreme from, say, here to here. So from x is negative 3 to x is negative 1, that is my extreme value. OK, so for that section of the graph, that is the top point. It actually happens to be the top point for the whole graph. So we could say the domain is all real numbers. But since it wants just to indicate an interval, let's go ahead and just give it an interval. Okay, so we could say that it's all real numbers, the domain is all real numbers, but since it's asking us to write an interval, we can make up really any interval we want because it's a global maximum. But this is how we do it. It is the top point, like I said, I just took a slice from here to here. So it is the top point from here to here. Okay. So there's more than one answer. For all of these, there's more than one answer for how you can answer these. So for this one, I'm going to say x is between negative 3 and negative 1. So for the interval on this graph from negative 1 to negative 3, if I cut it off like this, a is the extreme value. Okay, so now I want to slide this over to b. So I want b to be an extreme value. So I want to just sort of focus in on b. And notice that's kind of convenient right there. There's B is my extreme for this section of the graph. So I could have done a little bit more. I could have done it like that. I could do a little bit less. I could do it like that. Um, but I kind of like using these whole numbers. So I'm going to do it like that. And let's use one that you can't see a name through. That might be nicer. OK, so like that. So B, the interval for B, would be my x's that are between negative 1 and positive 1. See, this is negative 1. This is positive 1. I want 
x values that are in between those. Okay, I'll let you figure out the rest. Okay, let's see. This one's pretty tricky, the one down here about f. Can you find an interval where point f's y value is either a maximum or a minimum? That one is pretty tricky, especially because f is not at a good location in terms of an x value. So good luck with that. We'll see what you guys come up with. Okay, and I'll let you figure this out too. We can talk about that in class tomorrow. All right, on the back, anything tricky here? Okay, this should be pretty straightforward. You're just labeling all the x-intercepts, y-intercepts, local and global maxes and mins. So you're going to put a dot and you're going to label it. If you're having a hard time squeezing all the words on, you could do this. You could say, okay, here's an x-intercept, and you could give it a name. You could call that A. And then over here, you can make a little chart and say, okay, A is an x-intercept. Okay, you could do something like that if you want, or you can just try and write it right on here. So instead of writing A and saying it's an x-intercept, you can just try and write that on here, x-intercept. So whatever works for you, okay? So um, either way is fine with me. Okay, so you can have a little legend and just put letters on here, or you can actually mark it up. Okay, this part, find the y-intercept of each function. Okay, so y-intercepts, so like this is a y-intercept. So what are the coordinates right there? My coordinates of a y-intercept my x value is 0, my y value is negative 6. Okay, that's a y-intercept. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to let you figure out the rest without me. Okay, y-intercept, think about it. This y-intercept, what are its coordinates? 0 and negative 6. So now you think about it. How do you find a y-intercept? All right, so that's number 4. Number 5, I need to go get a number 5. I don't have one. Okay, for number five, you're going to need a couple of highlighters. You're going to be highlighting some values, so get yourself two colors. I'm going to be using blue and pink. Okay, so the term function value always refers to the y value or output value. Okay, so whatever number we get for y for a given x value or input. So when x is negative one, f of negative one, that would mean what is y when x is negative one? So let's find x is negative 1 is right here. Now I need to trace that up to the graph until I hit it. That would be right here. What's my y value? My y value is 12. Okay, so you should be able to do the rest of those. Now, part two, use a highlighter to indicate every point on the graph where the function value is negative. Okay, so here my function value was positive. So where's one that's going to be negative? So I think this one's going to be negative. When x is equal to 2, what's my y value? I go down, I hit the graph, and I go over, and I get negative 3. So here is a negative, a y value that's negative. So I'm going to use pink for negative. So I can start by just doing the points, but eventually you need to um, trace along showing all the parts of the graph where y is negative, okay? And this shouldn't be very difficult. That's why I'm stopping right there. Also, my phone is barking at me. Okay, good luck. If you have any other questions, um, send me an email.